That's the main issue in being alive, bumping into problems constantly. We humans try to maintain an ideal condition within our body in order to perform all the vital functions that we need to live. But nature, nature is dynamic. Everything is dynamic, it's constantly changing. That's why we constantly get problems. That's why we struggle to keep that ideal condition within our body. Fortunately, we're consciously aware of just a part of those problems. However, there are people who actually enjoy these problems, and we call those people scientists. I mean, they must enjoy their lives more than anyone else. And that's why I once thought, well, Stefano, you should try to become a scientist one day. To be more specific, a neuroscientist. So here we go. This is the everyday life, Stefano. This is the aspiring neuroscientist, Stefano. What's the main difference? Well, apart from looking quite geeky with fancy tele glasses on, the main difference is about how science has helped me looking beyond what things look like, as well as questioning better. Neuroscience studies our nervous system, which is involved in receiving sensory inputs, incoming information from the external world, as well as from the internal environment, so our body. Then we elaborate that information and we respond to the changing environment with the motor output. So in January, I began work on computational modeling to replicate motor output. Basically, I've started learning how to recreate a computerized model of a circuit of neurons that should predict the, out the outcomes by giving a set of inputs. And this really helped me understand how crucial understanding and modeling the circumstances and the situation that we're dealing with uh, is. I, I mean, in our, in our everyday life too, what does modeling in our everyday life too means? It means considering, taking, taking into consideration all people and all things involved in that situation. So then, what am I referring to? What actually is the daily experiment? Well, the daily experiment is something constantly ongoing. But to me, the daily experiment can be trying to change our day by taking a walk if we feel upset. It can be risking to say what we really think and then seeing, looking at people's reactions. Sometimes it can be embarrassing, sometimes it can be funny. Or eating food that we're not sure to throw away, maybe sadly left in the fridge for a few days, becoming somehow poisonous. Or can be as important as advising who tells us about their own problems. So then at this point, what is our ability to take the next best step? What is our ability to make a decision and perform the corresponding motor output? Well, usually, we, uh, when we get a problem, we try to retrieve previous similar experience then we try to come up with different options as possible solutions for that problem. Then we evaluate, we hypothesize, we try to predict uh, the outcomes of those options. We evaluate uh, which outcome works better for us if you eventually perform the corresponding motor task to that option. So we are testing that option at that given place and time on ourselves. So we, as researchers, we are testing on ourselves as test subjects that option. But we are testing that option on other people too. So we are test subjects, but other people are test subjects too. And we don't employ, generally speaking, any anesthetizing drug, right? Why? Well, apart from some legal issues, the main uh, a good reason is that we need to understand how painful that solution is, whether we can use it in future or not. But our results can be spoiled from uh, our mood, for example. So if we put enthusiasm, or if, or if we worry too much, the results can radically change. And um, our results can be even spoiled from, from the very beginning by the assumptions that, that we make. Uh, as li I like scientists, when they argue about their findings, we make assumptions when we think and talk about something. And we might forget about uh, making a very simple assumption, a very simple principle. Our world is the choices we make. So then, 
the question, what is our ability to take the next best step, can actually be turned into what is our ability to model our world. Let's have a very common example, very simple question. What will I have for lunch today? This is a problem. Well, this question, this problem, can be analyzed and divided in sub-questions. First of all, today, what do I want my body to become in future? Healthy? Or do I want to increase the chance of developing disorders during my life in future? So then, hurting myself, compelling my beloved ones to look after me, using some other people's contributions for my own healthcare, preventing those contributions to be invested in education and community facilities. Then, should I try something new? Should I risk not to like my meal to taste a new flavor? Then, where am I getting that food from? Am I getting fresh food from local farmers? Or am I getting imported food from the other side of the world? So then, endorsing pollution of the air we breathe, the environment where we live. Moreover, is that company that we're getting food from treating ethically its workers and the environment? And fourth sub-question, how energetically demanding is the production of that food for our environment, for the environment where we all live in? Like meat, for example, is quite demanding for, for the environment. What would our environment be if anyone ate like me? So as you can see behind this one very simple question, there are many questions behind it. And all these questions change their appropriate answers in time, case by case, day by day, if you're ill, if you're a baby, if you're an adult. And all this variety requires us to be good everyday life scientists as well as aware test subjects. That's why I think that researching is so important. Researching our everyday life is just considering the effects of our actions on other people that we might, we, we might think they are not involved. But yeah, all these problems. So then our life is basically rocket science if we need to calculate all, the, all, the, all these things. But we've got a brain, and you know it's lose it or lose it. And our brain changes. Our brain changes uh, accordingly to the, to the experiences that, that we come across. Our brain is the bridge, is the connection between science and our everyday life. So. Our brain changes when we learn something, when we look at something, or even when we listen to someone. And I'm not very sure about uh, if the words that I try to inject in your brain tonight have been delivered successfully, and actually don't even know the side effects. But this has been my daily experiment tonight, so thank you for your participation.